such a great joy to be here for the first time to share the word of god when i came here a while ago your pastor took me to his cabin and shared his testimony i tell you pastor stephen you made my day i saw the fruit of my labor 31 years ago when he was 16 i betray you <laughs> so you have already calculated it anyway so uh, what god has spoken i am delighted to see it has come to pass today Amen. what the mouth of the lord saith the hand of the lord doeth when god says something he will perform it with his hand and ladies and gentlemen remember if god had spoken to you he will fulfill it delay is not a denial delay is not a denial maybe god as i said in the first day of the conference is waiting for his time if we need to get things happen in our time it will be small when we leave it for god to do in his time it will be big so wait for god's time so that you will receive something big so that you will receive something great when he told me i look up to you with a fatherly respect i was so amazed so happy and also proud that i could see him being a blessing to different nationals in this uh, part of the world may the lord continue to bless you man of god your wife your family your ministry and enlarge your territories our most loving and gracious father we come to the throne of grace we bow before you we pray o oh god that as we meditate upon thy words you would speak to us individually and collectively o oh lord we pray that you would touch your people encourage them edify them send them back home or to their respective places with a new blessing in jesus name we pray amen if you have bible with you would you please turn with me to gospel according to st luke chapter 22 verses 7 to 15 luke's gospel chapter 22 verses 7 to 15 then came the day of unleavened bread when the passover must be killed and jesus sent peter and john saying go and prepare the passover for us that we may eat jesus said to peter and john go and prepare the passover it was during the last week of his life in this world the last passover jesus celebrated he called two of his disciples peter and john jesus had many disciples some people think jesus did not have many that's the reason why the enemies could kill him pilate could not judge because there was a huge crowd behind jesus supporting jesus the pharisees scribes 
the priests and the high priests were against him but lot of people were behind jesus that's the reason why pilate could not make a decision he didn't want to get into the politics so he washed off his hand in fact before which he sent him to herod there were thousands of followers that jesus had and there were secret disciples bible says joseph of arimathea was a secret disciple for the fear of jews that they would kill him so there were many 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 people who followed jesus there were many disciples hundreds or thousands of disciples with jesus but you know out of whom jesus chose 12 to be the apostles and then at important occasions jesus took only peter james and john so he had 12 apostles and he created an inner circle inner circle of consisting three disciples peter james and john when he had to go to the house of jairus to raise the daughter who was dead the 12 year old girl he took only peter james john into the house of jairus the ruler of the synagogue the inner circle when he went up to the mount of transfiguration he took only peter james and john and there he transfigured before them moses appeared elijah appeared bright cloud overshadowed them god the father from heaven spoke saying he is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him and when he happened to go to gethsemane to pray he again took only these three the inner circle peter james and john to gethsemane see out of thousands hundreds out of hundreds he picked up 12 he picked up 12 to be his disciples and out of 12 he short listed three and now out of three he picks up only two see thousands became hundreds hundreds became 12 12 we know 12 became three and now three becomes two he took only peter james he called peter and james god shortlist finally it was only one he called one fellow and said john take care of my mother john take care of my mother i know you are such a sweet son i know you are so faithful i can entrust the responsibility of taking care of my mother so John this is your mother take care one one peter peter do you love me yes take care of my lamb peter do you love me yes lord i do love you you know that take care of my sheep feed them ladies and gentlemen jesus believes in short listing there is an old song which you we used to sing when the saints go marching by lord i want to be numbered god believes in short listing come on ladies and gentlemen probably among all the foreign preachers probably among all the visiting preachers to this church i would be the proudest preacher happiest preacher you know because uh, indirectly is my spiritual son so naturally i need naturally i need to be proud of this congregation but i need to tell i just want to bless you by saying that god would enlarge your territories how i wish next time i come this church will grow to be uh, having a strength of 1000 people then 2000 5000 why not 10000 amen and you know uh, most of the time i joke but joke had become prophecy yeah 
even i tell you seriously even a joke of a prophet is a prophecy yes even a joke of a prophet is a prophecy okay ladies and gentlemen i don't know how big you will grow but you will grow i don't know how big the church will grow but this church will grow the lord shall add on hundreds of people thousands of people into this church you have a long way to go but in spite of the fact that we are more in number in case the lord shortlists thousands hundreds hundreds 12 12 3 3 2 2 1 will you be there will you be there ladies and gentlemen so just being part of thousands one day i asked my friend in chennai he was going to a big church traveling traveling 40 kilometers by train he will go to a church um i don't like to mention the name of the pastor or the church he knows that 40 45 kilometers he will travel by train he will leave 2 hours before the church starts if the church starts at 9 o'clock he will leave home before 7 o'clock go all the way 9 to 11 he will be in the church and then travel back by the time he gets back home it will be 2 o'clock and next street where he lives has got the same church with that same name denomination okay it spread all over but you know next street he has got that church but he will travel 45 miles to go to that church spend more than 7 8 hours on the road and then in the church i asked him a question when you have church of the same denomination next street why do you go 45 miles altogether 90 miles both ways leave home at 7 o'clock in the morning return in the afternoon 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock he told me a secret a lot of people come there brother probably today they claim to be the largest church in chennai my city but you know people go sometimes uh, i've sad to say pastor stephen sad to say they go because there is a big crowd jesus does not believe in big crowds in spite of the fact i'm blessing you to be big I just want to tell you as a preacher I just want to tell you the truth Jesus does not believe in big crowds Jesus believes in shortlisting Come on my brother come on my sister if the Lord shortlists would you be there Would you be there Would you be there So always remember that we should be found when the saints go marching by Lord I want to be numbered and now Jesus called these two Peter and John you know you know why bible says in acts of the apostle chapter 10 and verse 34 god is no respecter of person if god is no respecter of person when i was preparing the message the mount of transfiguration i just was very critical i said jesus how come you do that you do something that is not acceptable to me in my flesh bible says god is no respecter of person according to acts 10:34 but here you took peter james and john to the mount of transfiguration and you revealed yourself they saw your glory your face transformed like the uh, like a sun it did shine like a sun your garment like a light moses came elijah came father spoke from heaven i tell you for these disciples 
when they were with Jesus, this was the most precious, glorious occasion. Only three had the privilege. What about nine? Why should Jesus leave those nine people down there and take only three to reveal his glory? Wasn't it glorious? Yes. What can be better than this? A God who is not a respecter of person took only these three. Then I found the answer. In the same Matthew's Gospel chapter 17 and verse 9 when they were about to come down from the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus commanded. Matthew 17 and verse 9 says, Jesus commanded them, tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. See, Jesus commanded not to speak about this vision to anyone till the Son of Man is risen. Follow me? If, if, if only Jesus had taken the nine disciples, they would have immediately come down and propagated all over the nation saying, Oh, we saw the glory of God. We heard the voice of Jehovah from heaven. Oh, we saw Moses, which was greatest vision for them. Moses was a savior for them. Elijah was a great prophet for them. He, they would have come and told everybody, we saw Moses, we saw Elijah, we saw a bright cloud, we heard the voice of God from heaven saying, he is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Who would dare kill him? None. The crucifixion would have been dragged. The crucifixion would have been delayed. Jesus did not come into this world to live. Jesus came into this world to die. That's why Jesus did not take those nine people knowing that they will propagate. They will tell everyone about the vision. By taking Peter, James and John, he not only took them up to the Mount of Transfiguration, he took them into his confidence. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, he took them into his confidence. Whomsoever God can take into his confidence, to them he will reveal his glory. Amen. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, if God can take you into his confidence, he can reveal his glory to you. Amen. Are you trustworthy? Can God take you into his confidence? Are you trustworthy? Yes. If you are trustworthy, God will reveal His glory to you. So remember always, not just being a disciple, not just being a worshiper, not just being a giver, not just being a regular attendant to the church. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that you are a trustworthy disciple. That God can take you into His confidence. Amen? Now, Jesus took them into his confidence, called Peter John and said to them, go and prepare. Go and prepare. The Lord is giving a responsibility, a duty to you, disciple of Jesus. God is giving you some responsibility. We just need not necessarily be only a worshipper. We need also to prepare something. Prepare something. Prepare for the kingdom of God. Amen? Yes. Most people think, oh, I'm good. Regularly going to church on time. Regularly going to Bible studies. I'm a worshipper. Read Bible, pray, fast, give my offerings and tithes. I'm a good believer. That's not enough. That's not enough. God is entrusting a responsibility to you by saying, prepare something. We 
have a responsibility my brother my sister ladies and gentlemen believer in jesus christ god hath given us some responsibility prepare 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 yes god wants partners god wants partner god can do anything without you but would not god can but will not god can do anything on his own but you know he always expected partners yes every miracle even if you come to the new testament only even in the new testament only you find jesus partnering with others yes he could have done he could have simply said to simon peter go go check your boat it's full of fishes after all it is he who made the fish come and fall into the net he could have as well made the fish jump into the boat he could have but you know he wanted simon peter to partner him go and cast your nets jesus could have simply said to simon peter put your hand into your pocket there'll be a silver coin take it give it for me and for you to the tax collectors no he said go go to the sea with a hook cast the hook catch the first fish open the mouth you will find a silver coin take it and give it to the tax collectors for me and for you he expected simon peter to partner with him in the ministry he could have done any miracle he could have just mary brought servants and made them stand before jesus and she preached a sermon saying whatsoever jesus saith unto you to do do it you know it is they they are the ones who brought the water poured it into the jars and they are the ones again took and gave it to the governor of the feast follow me Jesus did not touch that water Jesus did not put cross in that water Jesus did not spit and made a mud and then put it into the water to color it Jesus did nothing he is sitting there and the water pots are there you know he wanted those servants to partner with Jesus pour the water he could have simply said mary you go see the jars full of wine done if jesus could transform water into wine jesus could have as well made the jars to be full of wine he could after all he is a miracle working god he could have done but you know he expected those servants to partner with jesus yes ladies and gentlemen any miracle if you would expect god to perform you become a partner if you just sleep lie down on an easy chair doing nothing you know god will not do anything god does not believe in blessing lazy people who sleep 20 hours out of 24 hours god cannot bless such people yes abraham had to go and pitch a tent Isaac had to sow seed so that God will bless him. Hundred four. Isaac had to dig wells so that he will see fountain of water. Yes. Jacob had to go and cut the tree's leaves and put it before the sheep. He had to partner. It is God who blessed him so that he could be greater than his father-in-law Laban. if god can do that miracle he could have done otherwise but he expected abraham isaac jacob to partner with him ladies and gentlemen today i ask you a question who are you say i am a partner with jesus who are you i am partner with jesus christ say i am a partner with jesus christ say i am a partner with jesus christ 
I am a partner with Jesus Christ. Come on, if you don't go, go and say, Oh, I am a housewife, homebaker, I am retired, doing nothing, unemployed, recession, this and that. Don't, don't worry about it. If somebody is asking you, what are you doing? You just simply say, I am partnering with Jesus. Amen? I am partnering with Jesus. Amen. Yes. Go and prepare. Go and prepare for the Passover. Then they asked him, Master, where do you want us to prepare? See, always the best thing is to check the will of God. Follow me? The best thing is to check the will of God. Jesus taught us to pray, let thy will be done on earth as, as it is done in heaven. Yes, do, ladies and gentlemen, do the purpose of God. Do the will of God in your life. These two disciples asked Jesus, where do you want us to prepare? Always check what is the will of God for you. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, always check what is the purpose of God in your life. Then you will prosper. Now, Jesus said, Behold, the 10th verse of the 22nd chapter of Luke's gospel, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Go into the city. God is giving the direction. Go. If we are willing to go, he is willing to direct. Every time God gave direction, go to the village, you will find a colt. You will find a donkey. Untie, bring. Go to the sea, cast your hook. Cast your nets into deep. Cast your net on the right side. Yes. Go to the priests and show forth yourselves. See, Jesus is the best director in the world. I tell you, there are so many people directing movies. Eh? The best director is God. Whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, in the Old Testament you find Jehovah the best director. Somebody produced Ten Commandments and it became such a great movie. But you know, the Ten Commandments, the director was not the one who directed. He copied God's direction. <laughs> Amen? Yes. There cannot be. That, uh, the other guy, who uh, uh, um, passion, uh, passion Mel of the, uh, Mel, 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 Mel Gibson. It is not his production. It is not his direction. The direction is here. He only followed the direction of God. And they get money. <laughs> what I am trying to say is, ladies and gentlemen, just be subject to him. He will guide you. Step by step. One day at a time. Just tell him, Lord, I am available. Lord, I am ready. I am willing to do what you want me to do. I am ready to go in the direction that you direct me. Amen? He is the best navigator. No. Sometimes in our car, we just uh, type out the address, the town, everything, and then switch it on. I tried once. I could have reached that place. Deliberately, I did it. Just to check how far the navigator is good. In my own way, I could have reached that spot in two kilometers. But the navigator directed me, went this way, that way, that way. Finally, I came after six kilometers. Yeah. The navigators will fail. The guides will fail. Yes. Most of the time, 
when i go to israel i don't depend on guides i know better than the guides since 1984 i had been going to sri israel i know i know where it is what it is sometimes the guides think they know everything sometimes the guide thinks that they know everything most of the guide think that we don't know anything in american don't know nothing but i always make my guide sit and i direct that fellow will be sitting and taking notes of my teaching and it, it when every time i left you no know, shandi every time we left sir, israel the guide would final on the last day would come and say sir here after i will follow the guidelines you have given <laughs> amen and his guideline is based on geography his guideline is uh, given by the tourism department my guidelines are from here from heaven yes follow the direction that god gives to you yes now go to the city opposite to you jesus says then you will find a man carrying a pitcher of water <laughs> we are asians right we are asians in asia we believe in bible even in bible who would go to fetch water you tell me in the bible ah uh, in asia if somebody needs to go to a well and fetch water who would go to fetch water man or woman yeah everybody says even the bible it's women it was all along it was rebecca who came to fetch water when eliezer came it was laban's daughters who were fit, uh, uh, at the well to fetch water or to take care of the sheep it was when moses went he found girls taking care of the sheep and taking them to water even to the new testament if you come it was in Samaria it was a woman 12 noon came to fetch water so both in the old testament and in the new testament in the bible even in our culture in asia it is mostly almost all women would go fetch water traditionally but now jesus says when you go there is a brook a lot of women will be coming fetching water go behind one of them that fellow will be totally confused <laughs> totally confused peter and john would be confused which woman to follow the the chaos today is this the problem in this world is today is this so our lord is not an author of confusion but of peace amen yes so jesus thought hey you john and peter i do not want you to go behind a woman <laughs> peter and john i do not want you to get confused so in the midst of so many women follow me in the midst of so many women going with a the pitcher there will be only one man hallelujah because of you because of you simon because of you john i will arrange for a man <laughs> hallelujah yes ladies and gentlemen our lord is not an author of confusion but of peace god will never misguide you in your marriage it's never a flop yes my wife shanti was saying i told i asked my mother in law one day auntie how did you find me to give your daughter to me and she told me i attended some of your meetings i found you to be handsome underline okay 
<laughs> I found you to be smart and line. I found you to be good, right? Okay. I found you to be a servant of God. So, when I delivered Shanti, I prayed, Lord, if this child would come out into this world alive, I will dedicate this child to do ministry. So, I found you to be a minister. I give my daughter to you to minister along with you. Ladies and gentlemen, always, always take heed that you do the purpose of God in your life. Jesus now says, I am preparing a man in the midst of so many women carrying picture. I do not want you to get stranded. I do not want you to get confused. I do not want to, you to follow a wrong direction. I will arrange for one man. When you go in this direction, I don't know after how many minutes they left, what is the distance between the place where they were and where Jesus asked that they would meet a man, two kilometers, five kilometers, I don't know. And when they go, I don't know whether it would be 11 o'clock, 11.30, 12, I don't know what time. But Jesus times it up. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, every move of your life is timed up. God has a timetable for you. I tell you my brother, I tell you my sister, God has a timetable for you. Things would happen right things would happen, best things would happen, at the right time, appropriate time, God has already fixed it for you. Amen? Amen? Give a round of applause. Come on, give a round of applause. God has timed a miracle for you. Everything. The right boy will come to marry you. The right girl will come to marry you. The right time you will give birth to a child. Right time you will finish your education. Right time you will get the right job. Right time you will get the right contract. Right time you will click in a business. Right time you will prosper in your life. Right time you will click in your ministry. Something is going to happen. God has timed it. God has timed it up. 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 It will happen in his time. Yes. Now, go. When you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher. See, I'm a man of imaginations. You are going from east to west. Okay? That man is coming from west to east. So you are going in this direction. He is coming in that direction. You will meet in a particular place, one man prepared of the Lord. And Jesus says, follow him. What you must do? Are you, are you following me very clearly? You are going from east to west. That man is coming from west to east. So you follow him. That means you need to take U-turn. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, believers, the apostles, who was part of the inner circle, at one point had to take U-turn. Follow me, my brother, my sister, man of God, woman of God, there will be times when God will expect you to change your direction. Amen? For better. God will expect you to change your direction. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is saying, take your turn. Amen? You may be a minister. You may be a preacher. You may be a strong believer. I tell you, 
in your life there would be times when the lord would expect you to take new turn yes it was jesus it is jesus who sent them from east to west when a junction came it is jesus who is asking at this junction take you turn at a crucial junction juncture ladies and gentlemen at a crucial juncture the lord would expect you to take you turn are you ready yes you cannot simply say oh i am used to this direction going from east to west is good every time my driver drives the car i just would take a moment to think which direction i am going am i going uh, from north to south or south to north is it morning or afternoon you know if it is morning i will sit this side of the car if it is afternoon i'll sit on the other side of the car you know why in the morning the sunlight will be here in the evening it will be that side so i'll be very careful i just gauge take a moment to see and sit where the sunlight would not hit me i am so used brother i you always go in this direction east to west no at times god will expect you to take your turn change your direction by believers in christ men of god women of god servants of god oh dearly beloved ladies and gentlemen i just want to tell you if god is asking you to take your turn be obedient be obedient do what exactly god is asking you to do now the lord is asking them take your turn and follow him take your turn and follow him and he will go into a house bible says he will get into a house a man carrying a pitcher carrying water need not necessarily go into a house he could have gone to the garden to water the garden he could have gone to the yard to water the cattle he could have gone elsewhere but jesus knows where he would go where he would end up so jesus is saying he will enter into a house see god's direction marvelous he will enter into a house and follow him there will be the owner of the house sitting follow me the owner of the house that means this fellow is not the owner owner is there jesus knoweth jesus knows the minute details of your journey yes he is not the owner the owner is there and he will be waiting so when you enter you will find the owner hallelujah what does it mean i am a man of imaginations i just imagine that owner was waiting for john and peter amen yes yes if the lord has timed up what you need will be waiting for you elias a prayed Lord I have come to pick up a girl for Isaac the son of Abraham sent the right person immediately after he finished his prayer he opened to see a virgin a beautiful young girl who knew not a man Rebecca came to fetch water it is in answer to God's prayer yeah in answer to Elias's prayer yes i can quote hundreds God Jehovah said to Elijah go from sherith to zarifat i have prepared a widow for you he comes to zarifat as he entered into this gate of the zarifat city he found a woman picking up the widow picking up sticks what does it mean elijah did not wait for a miracle 
miracle was waiting for him. Elijah did not wait for the widow. The widow was waiting. Jesus said to Peter, go and cast your hook. Get hold of the first fish, open the mouth and you will find a silver coin in the mouth of the fish. When he came, Jesus said, first fish. Not one out of thousand. First fish. He came. In the meantime, Jesus, I'm a man of imagination. I imagine Jesus would have commanded a fish in the sea. Hey, fish, go quickly. Go quickly. Dive. Go into the water. You will find a skeleton of a boy. Long ago he drowned. He has a trouser. Put your mouth into the trouser pocket. You will find a pocket and put your mouth into it. Pick it up, pick it up. The fish would have said, Jesus, I found a boy with 20 pockets. <laughs> Nowadays, the boys wear pants, trousers, so many pockets. Three in the front right side, three on the left right side, side three, this side three, back four, this side four, and behind the belt some pockets, so many pockets, no cash. Only one old broken mobile phone. <laughs> but so many pockets. The fish said, Jesus, I find a skeleton. I found a trouser. But there are so many pockets. Come on, come on, quickly, quickly. Right side, front pocket. Right side, front pocket. And the mouth, the fish put its mouth inside and grabbed a silver coin. Go quickly, go quickly. Simon is coming. You will, when you come up, you will find a pillar. In between two pillars, you wait, 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 wait there, wait there. The fish came, waiting, 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 waiting. <laughs> Jesus said, Jesus said, I told Simon Peter, first fish, don't give room for any other fish to get in. <laughs> Nobody to come in between. Come on, go wait. And the fish was waiting. He did cast the net, cast the hook. The first, first fish. Simon Peter was not waiting for a miracle. Miracle was waiting for Simon Peter. Come on ladies and gentlemen. What I am trying to say is. You don't need to wait for a miracle. I repeat. You don't need to wait for a miracle. Come on ladies and gentlemen. A miracle is waiting for you. Come on. Give a round of applause. <laughs> Sitting. And you go. And tell him, the master has sent so that we would prepare a place for the Passover. Jesus said, then he will show you a large furnished upper room. I think Pastor Stephen is thinking, John Solomon is talking about my church. <laughs> then he will, the house, the house owner, then the house owner will show you a large furnished upper room where the Passover must be prepared. We just now had, we just celebrated the Passover. We broke the bread. We took the wine. We celebrated what Jesus asked us to remember. Now, he will show you. When God gives, he gives the large ones. Hallelujah. If you want to take it, Francis, take it as a prophecy. God wants to give you a larger facility. Amen. Amen. Mrs. Francis, would you believe? Yes. God intends when soon this church will be overflowing. When God has to do something, it's after all his business. Amen. Amen? So, when God gives, he gives the best. When God gives, it's large. When God gives, it is furnished. Amen. Carpeted. Hallelujah. It's all set for you. My brother, my sister, I'm not only talking for the church. I'm talking for every member of this congregation. God has already prepared something for you. 
in in regard to your education in regard to your profession in regard to your job in regard to your promotion in regard to your marriage in regard to your house in regard to your business in regard to your ministry god i tell you as prepared as prepared something for you it is large it's beautiful it is furnished it is carpeted it is the best say best say the best the best ah it's for you it's yours it's yours it's yours it's already set they did not carpet it john and john and peter did not carpet it they did not furnish it it is ready made god has kept a ready made blessing for you god has kept a ready made miracle for you and prepare it there and finally ladies and gentlemen the last point the 15th verse then jesus the 14th verse says when the hour had come he sat down and the 12 apostles with him the 15th verse of the 22nd chapter of luke's gospel says then jesus said to them with fervent desire i have desire to eat this passover with you before i suffer when a few years ago few years ago when i was meditating this passage when the 15th verse of the 22nd chapter of luke's gospel came before my eyes i was shutting myself in a room i fell down on the floor i rolled on the floor i cried aloud you know why one person who doesn't have any desire has one desire one person who has no desire whatsoever has one desire only one desire it is to sit with you it is to sit with you it is to break the bread with you it is to share the wine with you to celebrate the passover with you ladies and gentlemen jesus as a person who doesn't have any desire as only one desire in tamil it says migum aasaya irundey migum aasaya irundey ஆசையே இல்லாத ஆசாபாசமே இல்லாத ஆசை இல்லாத ஒருவருக்கு ஒரே ஒரு ஆசை அந்த ஆசை என்னவென்றால் உன்னோட கூட உட்கார வேண்டும் என்ற ஒரு ஆசை ஒன்லி ஒன் டிசையர் த டிசையர் இஸ் டு சிட் வித் யூ ஆர் யூ ரெடி டு சிட் வித் ஹிம் எஸ் சகயஸ் சகயஸ் கம் டவுன் குயிக்லி that i must stay in your house today yes he wants the disciples of ibaius said the time is far spent come stay with us jesus went in stayed with them took the bread break it and their eyes were opened ladies and gentlemen he decided to stay to break the bread with the disciples of emmaus behold i stand at the door and knock if any one hears my voice and opens the door i will come in and sup with him and he with me shall we rise up to our feet glory to god glory to god as we remain standing in the presence of god my brother my sister something is happening make up your mind to come into the short list come into the inner circle when the saints go marching by lord 
I want to be number. I want to be that John. I want to be that Simon Peter. Would you rededicate? The desire of the Lord Jesus is that he would want to sit with you. He wants to sup with you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come in and sup with him and he with me. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Look up to God. Last two or three minutes.